Welcome to our lecture online. Now the only difference between this integral and the one, the one we did before in the previous video is that we changed the negative to a plus. And you may think, what's the difference? But it actually makes quite a bit of difference in trying to get to the answer. The final answer isn't much different from what we saw in the previous video, but how to get there is quite different. Because now we have to change the way we set up our triangle Notice we have x on the far side, a on the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse is the square root of a squared plus x squared because of the plus that needs to go to the hypotenuse. So now we have the tangent of theta defined as x over a. x therefore is equal to a tangent of theta. The derivative of that, dx d theta is a secant square of theta, which is the derivative of the tangent. And then the cosine of the angle is defined as a over the hypotenuse, which means the hypotenuse is defined as a times the secant of theta. So now we're ready to substitute all that into our integral here to see what we end up with. So this is equal to the integral of dx in the numerator, which will be a secant squared theta d theta. In the denominator, we have the product of x, and x is defined as a times the tangent of theta, and then the square root of x squared plus a squared defined as a times the secant of theta. And let's hope we can simplify things as much as possible here. We have the secant of theta here, the secant squared. We have an a here, and we have another a there. And let's see here, hmm. Now let's rewrite it to see what we end up with. So this is equal to the uh, 1 over a, we'll take the a outside the integral sign, times the integral of the secant in the numerator, which is 1 over the cosine of theta. So secant becomes 1 over cosine. And in the denominator, we have the tangent, which is the sine of theta divided by the cosine, which can go to the numerator. And then we have a d theta. So we can simplify it like that. And then you realize that the two cosines cancel out which means we now have the integral of 1 over a times the integral of 1 over the sine of theta times d theta. And that looks deceivingly easy. You need a trick. What is the trick to integrate 1 over the sine? Well, the trick is to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the sine of theta. So this can now be written as 1 over a times the integral of the sine of theta divided by the sine square of theta d theta. And now you may wonder, well, how did you get any help out of that? Well, you can do that by rewriting this as 1 over a times the integral of the sine of theta in the numerator divided by, this can be written as 1 minus the cosine square of theta. 1 minus the cosine square of theta d theta. And now, let's see here. Now I think we're ready to do a substitution. If, if we, let, we let u equal the cosine of theta, then we can write du d theta as being the negative sine of theta, which means that du or d theta, let's see here. Let me take a look at that. So d theta can now be written as du over the negative sine of theta. Ah, that will work out. So du, oh, d theta, d theta can be written as the negative du over the sine of theta. So now I have the proper substitution to rewrite that integral. So this now becomes equal to, we still have the 1 over a times the integral of the sine of theta well, hang on a second, hang on a second. Let's see here. Yeah, we'll leave that. We'll leave that for now. Sine of theta times d theta, which is times a minus du divided by the sine of theta or the negative sine of theta. Let's see here. Yep, so we have a negative du divided by the sine of theta. Ah, the sine of theta cancel out. That's good. And in the denominator, we can write this as one minus u squared. So the sine of theta cancels out, so this becomes minus 1 over a times the integral of 1 over 1 minus u squared du. 
Ah, now we have it in a format where we can actually use partial fractions. Oh, by now you might be pulling your hair out saying, when is it going to stop? But yes, we just need to keep going. And actually after a while that technique becomes fairly similar, or fairly comfortable here. So this is equal to minus one over a times the integral of one over one minus u times one plus u du. And now we can go ahead and use partial fractions. Hmm, I need a little bit of room here. Need some board space to come up with something that we can use as partial fractions. We can say that one over one minus u times one plus u can be written as a over one minus u plus b over one plus u. Which means that 1 is equal to a plus b and 0 is equal to uh, a minus b a minus b let's see if I have that right so if I cross multiply I end up with the following I end up with on the left side 1 equals a times 1 plus u plus b times 1 minus u don't have a lot of room there, but that's, that's what I get when I go ahead and cross multiply, when I multiply both sides of the equation by 1 minus u times 1 plus u. So we get 1 on the left side. We get a times 1 plus u plus b times 1 minus u on the right side, which means that equal sign. That means that 1 equals a plus b, and 0, because there's no u term on the left side, equals a minus b which means that a equals b, and when we plug an a in there, we get 1 equals 2a, which means a equals b equals 1 half. So using the partial fractions technique, we can pull out a 1 half, and then we can write this as minus 1 over 2a times the integral. It will be the sum of the two, so we have uh, 1 over... 1 minus u plus 1 over 1 plus u times du, which now become easy to integrate. So this becomes equal to minus 1 over 2a times the integral of this. That would be the negative natural log, negative natural log of, and probably want to use absolute value signs, 1 minus u plus the natural log of 1 plus u plus a constant of integration. Now realizing that this is negative and this is positive, so basically this is the natural log of 1 plus u minus the natural log of 1 minus u. So whenever you have the difference between two natural logs, you can write them as the fraction of one another. So this becomes equal to minus 1 over 2a times the natural log of 1 plus u divided by 1 minus u plus a constant of integration. And now at this point, we're basically done with the integral, but now we want to convert back to eventually x. So first we have to resubstitute from u to the angle theta and from theta to x. So let's go ahead and make the substitution. This is equal to minus 1 over 2a times the natural log of 1 plus Remember what u was equal to? u was equal to the cosine of theta. So 1 plus the cosine of theta divided by 1 minus the cosine of theta. Plus a constant of integration. So now I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, which means I'm going to end up with a 1 plus a cosine square in the numerator. So this is equal to minus 1 over 2a times the natural log of. So multiply the numerator by 1 plus the cosine of theta. That gives me 1 plus the cosine of theta quantity squared. And the denominator will get 1 minus the cosine of theta times 1 plus the cosine of theta, which gives me 1 minus the cosine of theta squared, like this, plus a constant of integration. 
And now, what I can do is I can rewrite 1 minus the cosine squared theta as the sine square of theta. So this becomes equal to minus 1 over 2a times the natural log of 1 plus the cosine of theta, quantity squared, divided by the sine square of theta. And now I'm take, I can take the square root of that and square it. With other words, if I take the square root, I need to square this, which means I need to put, put a 2 in the front. So this becomes equal to, let me show you what I'm, what I'm thinking about. So I'm going to take the square root of that quantity, but then I have to square it, and I can do the square by putting a 2 in front. So I'm going to multiply this times 2, like this. And so I negate the square root by putting the 2 in front. The 2's here will cancel. And now I have the following. This becomes equal to minus 1 over a times the natural log of the square root of the top becomes 1 plus the cosine of theta. In the denominator, I get the sine of theta plus a constant of integration. Now the only thing left to do is then to revert back to, from the angles, back in terms of x. So then I come over here, and let's see here. I can say that the cosine of theta is equal to this, and the sine of theta, hmm, I don't have that anywhere. Oh, let's see here, sine of theta, let me see. The sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, the square root of a squared plus x squared. And then I can substitute that in here. So this becomes equal to minus 1 over a times the natural log of, in the numerator, I get 1 plus the cosine of theta. So I get 1 plus a over the square root of a squared plus x squared. And in the denominator, I have the sine of theta, which becomes x divided by the square root of a squared plus x squared, like this. Now, if I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by a squared plus x squared, this cancels out, this cancels out, I end up with that, so then I end up with the following. I end up with this is equal to 1 over a times the natural log of x a squared, whoop, does it matter, x squared plus a squared? I guess I've reversed these two. I should have an x squared in, in the front. So x squared plus a squared, I'll try to stay consistent, plus a. And in the denominator, I simply get an x, and I need a constant of integration. There we go. And finally, this is the proper result we were looking for. So notice when we change the negative to a positive, it becomes a much more drawn out process to finally get the integral of 1 over x times the square root of x squared plus a squared. So it becomes negative, because I need to have a negative in here, so don't forget the negative. Negative from here, 1 over a times the natural log of square root of x squared plus a squared plus a divided by x. And that is the result we were looking for.